What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at variables and constants in Go. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at variables and constants in Golang. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, moving right along in Go. In this video, we're going to jump into variables and constants. Now, this usually would take like two seconds to explain, but in Go, they're a little bit different than other programming languages you might be used to. So it's going to take a few minutes to go over these. So in Go, unlike a lot of modern programming languages like Python, you have to declare the variable, explain what type of data you're going to be using, the data type and then, you know, actually assign something to it. So with Python, you just go, you know, name equals John and you're good to go. Not so much in Go. So we need to talk for just a second about data types. You're probably familiar with data types. There's usually strings and integers and booleans and things like that. In Go, your main data types are string, int for whole numbers, float 32 for decimal numbers, and then bool for boolean. And booleans are true or false, right? So every time you create a variable, let's just jump in here. You have to say, hey, I'm going to create a variable. So you use this var keyword, right? Then you actually name it. So if we want to name it first name, we would do something like that. Now notice I'm using camel case here. You can do anything you want. You could do lowercase, you could do like that. But the convention in Go is camel case like that. So the first word in your variable is lowercase. The second word is uppercase. First lowercase f, name uppercase n, right? So now after we've named it, we have to tell Go what type of variable this is going to be. So this is going to be a string, right? And then finally, you can actually assign something to it, right? So that seems like a lot. And there's some shorthand we're going to talk about, but that's pretty much how it goes. So we can again, go fmt.println and pass in our first name and go ahead and save this, run it, head back over to our terminal. In my C go stuff directory, we could go go run hello.go and boom, it prints out John. So there is also a shorthand. And by the way, double slashes, that's comments in Go if you haven't figured that out. So like I said, there's a there's a shorthand, there's this weird operator, the colon equal to sign. So I'm just gonna call this shorthand variables. So if we wanted to create another variable called last name, we could just go last name, and then we can use this shorthand and then we could go elder. Now this is much easier. This sort of reminds you more of like a Python or a Ruby or even a PHP, right? So there's some benefits to doing this. There's also some drawbacks. So right here, we haven't explained what kind of data type we're using. Go will infer from the data. So it'll look at this and it'll go, you know what? That looks like a string. I'm gonna treat it as a string. If you went something like age like that, and you know, went 44, Go would be like, yeah, I think that's an integer and I'll start treating that age variable as an integer. Another drawback of this shorthand method is you can only do this inside of functions. And you can see right here, we're inside of a function. If you're outside of a function, you can't do this. You can use these outside of functions, right? So that's another thing. Another drawback is look at this age colon equals 44. We have assigned an age to this. Well, what if we wanted to create the variable but not assign anything to it right away? Right? Well, you can't do that using this method, because that would be weird. It would be like, uh, you know, then what? You wouldn't have anything, right? So regularly created variables using this first method, we can define a variable and not assign anything to it, and then assign something to it later on. So let's actually look at that real quick. Let's say create, but don't assign. So let's go var full name. And let's say we want this to be a string. Well, we can just do it like this. This has created a variable, we haven't, but we haven't actually yet assigned anything to it. And we can go fmt.println and then pass in our full name. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Actually, let me come down here and comment this guy out. So let's see if we save this. Now, I'm going to also comment out this guy, this guy, and this guy. Well, let me not. Let's just save this and run it. You can see we've got this age variable. And then we're printing full name. Now, if we try to run this, we're going to get an error that's going to say, hey, age was declared, but not used. That's another kind of weird thing about variables. If you're not using them right away, using the first method, we get an error. So that's kind of a weird thing. It's more of a, you know, C type thing. So again, if you're used to programming in Python, where you could just create variables and not even use them and not get errors, 
uh, not the case here. So getting back to this, we've created this variable. We haven't assigned anything to it. We're going to try and now print it out. If we save this and run it, we're just going to get a blank line. Why? Because the default for a string is just nothing, right? Not so with other variables. In fact, we can see this if we create another one. So let's go var age int and var tf for bool, right? So tf, short for true false, booleans are true false. Integer is a regular number. Let's create another one of var price. And that's going to be a float 32. So here, if we go full name, age, price, and tf, we want to print out all of these. Let's see what the defaults are for each of them. We get a blank, a zero, a zero, and a false. And you notice there's, you know, spaces between those. That's because our print ln function puts white space in. We talked about that in the last video. So, okay, that's kind of interesting. Now, what do we do if we want to use these some other time, like in the future? So we've created them, but now how do we actually put something in them? Well, we just assign it like you would. So you would just go full name equals John Elder. Here we can go age equals 44, price equals 1999, and TF equals true. So now, if we print this out again, let's save this and run it. The first time we get our defaults, blank, zero, zero, and false. The second time we get John Elder, 44, 1999, and true. All right, that's kind of cool. What else can we talk about? Let's talk about multiple variable declaration. So you've got several variables and you want to sort of declare and assign something to them all at once. How do you do that? Well, let's go var and I'm just going to call name one and then say we've also got a name two. Well, these are both going to be string. So we could say Tim, comma, Mary, right? So this will just sort of assume the first one you type in is for the first variable, the second one you type is for the second variable, right? So then we can fmt dot print line and go name one comma name two, save this, run it. And here we see Tim and Mary. So those are variables, you know, a little bit more complicated than you might think. Variables are usually very easy to deal with. And I guess this is easy too, once you know how to do this, but I don't know. I'm not a C guy. I've used C, I've used C++, I've used C sharp. Uh, this is sort of a, a C type of convention, right? You're going to name your variables, declare them, and then assign them, right? So that's just how it is. Now, very quickly, let's talk about constants. And a constant is a variable that can't change, right? Once it's been defined, you can't change it. These variables up here, we can change anytime we want. So we could go name one equals Fred. And then if we wanted to print these out a second time, we could save this, head back over here, run it again. First time it was Tim and Mary, now it's Fred and Mary. So we changed the variable. That's a normal thing you could do with variables, right? Constants, not so much. Once you've declared and created a constant, it is constant. It doesn't change. So to do that, we use the const keyword. And the convention for naming a constant is to use all uppercase letters. So I could go pizza, right? And then this is going to be a string. And here I'm just going to call pepperoni. There we go. So if we fmt.println and print out pizza, come back over here, run this guy. Boom, now here we get pepperoni. If we then try and change this guy, so if I go pizza equals cheese, and then try and print this guy out a second time, we're going to run into some errors. I'm guessing, right? Uh oh, can't assign to pizza. It's declared a constant. So, okay, that's interesting. Now, if we want to create multiple constants, let's say multiple constants, we could do that. We just call our const keyword. And then we can use parentheses. And here we can, you know, create as many as we want. Pizza one equals pepperoni. Pizza two equals cheese. My num equals 77. Whatever you want. Notice these are just each on their own line. They're not separated by commas or semicolons or anything at all. Just one per line. And now these can be used as any other constant would be used. So we could go fmt.print line pizza two save this guy come back over here run it again 
Oops, we forgot to undeclare. We forgot to, let's see, take off this. All right, so save this, come back over here, run it, and boom, we get cheese. So those are variables and constants in Go. Uh, you know, a little bit more complicated than something like Python or Ruby, but that's pretty much how Go is. It's a little bit more complicated than these other programming languages. The reason why you might want to use Go over other programming languages is because of the speed and the scalability, which we'll get into in another video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.